Hey, what's going on guys? So, you know, I've often wondered what happens to all the parrots that for whatever reason have become homeless, that can't stay in their homes. What happens to those parrots? Well, I'm back here in Forest Lake, actually right next door to the fish shop that I featured in a past video. But in this video, I'm gonna meet with Renee from the Parrot Adoption Education Program, and she is going to answer the question of what happens to parrots that become homeless. And we're also gonna meet some parrots that are in need of adoption right now. So this is Renee Quimby. Now you are the founder of Parrot Adoption Education Program, correct? I took over two years after it was founded. Oh, but two years I've after. I've been running it since 2004. Uh, we take in birds that people can't keep for whatever reason, and we keep them here, we keep them safe. We do the interviewing, and so you don't have crazy people coming to your house if you need to rehome your parrot, and um, interview people and find new homes for them. We, gotcha. also, we also board the birds when people are on vacation. Very, very cool. Well, let's kind of meet some of the parrots here. Well, this is Alex. He's one of our boarding parrots. We've known him for probably nine years. He came to us and we rehomed him and then their lives changed so he came back to us. Gotcha. Which is the agreement with our adopting. And then we found a new home, but now she's doing some home renovations, so he's here to stay safe from the fumes. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yes, because I know a lot of household fumes are not good for Paris. This is Green Bean, he's a military macaw. His owner passed away, so oh, no. there were no other family members, so the vet that they were taking him to asked us to help him. He's here looking for a new home. Mango's an interesting case, he's a blue and gold. Yeah. He came to us with only uh, fuzz on his front. Right. He's plucked for whatever reason. And he's only six years old, but he was in two homes before us. And when he came, he screeched like a scared woman every time he moved. Because in the prior home, he would, uh, they were afraid of him. So whenever he moved, they would screech. So he put the two behaviors together. Gotcha. So we whisper to him, keep him calm. And now he's throwing his feathers back, less stress maybe from that. And um, he doesn't screech every time he moves, which is really nice. If a parrot owner, you know, sees their parrot doing that, what can they do to, you know, help prevent that? One of the worst things we can do, but it's a natural thing, we say, don't pluck your feathers. And we think we're scolding them like we would our five-year-old child, but they perceive that as attention. So they go, oh, if I pluck my feathers, they'll talk to me more. Right. So we want to distract them without giving them a reward. And then we want to keep them busy. We give them shred or phone books to shred, um, rope to chew on. We talk to them. We give them different foods. Give them more showers. Maybe there's something irritating them. It's not stress. Maybe it's a medical thing. So gotcha. you should also check with your veterinarian to make sure it isn't anything medical. Absolutely. Bo came to us after his owners of 37 years, one of them died in a car crash. Oy. So the family brought him to us and we are trying to find him a new home. He seems to think for men. Mm -hmm. He plucked like this when he came. We see a few new feathers growing, but with so few to preen, sure. he concentrates on those and pulls them back out. So he'll oh probably boy. never be feathered again. He's close to 40. It's a gorgeous green wing macaw, but oh, that's just so sad that he uh, is pulling out all his beautiful feathers. So now Bobo here is up for adoption, correct? He is, and he seems to prefer men as well, but he will let me reach in and pet him sometimes when it's calm. Gotcha. Yeah. And next door is Bo. Bo. Bo we know is a female because she was egg bound before she got here. And that, gotcha. That worked its way out but she's plush so Bo was brought to us um, the owner came from California with Bo and uh, he was renting a home and when his home got sold the new landlord said he couldn't have his bird there so he had to give him up oh no and this is Jessie she's got an interesting story her owner is from Kuwait Oh, okay. And she is actually waiting to be shipped back to Kuwait, but we have to have the vet certification and proper travel papers. So what is the process of shipping parrots across the world? It depends on each country, but um, you definitely have to have a good carrier with um, finger proof. Um, right. Um, so that any, any handlers won't reach in and get bit and the parrot won't chew its way out. Right. Um, you got to put in, uh, you can't put liquid in there really because water's going to spill. So we put in 
uh, liquid fruits like grapes, apples, um, gotcha. and oranges so that they have some liquid on the trip. This is Poppy and she came to us from uh, Wisconsin actually and then uh, somebody from Wisconsin adopted her. So uh, she's the one also owns Alex and is going to is doing a renovation so Poppy's gotcha. here to stay safe from the fumes. So she came from Wisconsin to Minnesota now she's going back to Wisconsin. <laughs> yes. Okay? Yes. So she's All right. half military and half blue and gold. So this is a hybrid? Yes. Isn't she gorgeous? Is she a Vikings fan or a Packers fan? Uh, she looks to be a Packers fan. Yeah, it's kind of, yeah, right, kind of, but you know, we'll just kind of think that she's a Vikings fan. Hello. 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 Hi, how you doing? Good to see you. You want a cookie? I want a cookie. I'm going to have to come back here and teach all of these parrots how to say rattle on. Yeah. Same. That's close. You got the R part down. All right, so moving on to the blue and golds here. This one is Cosmo. When he came to us, he had another parrot in his house, and um, she was divorced and downsizing, so she couldn't keep her two large birds. She kept her um, eclectus. But he would protect the female bird, and so they weren't good together. Mm. And we separated them, had them on opposite sides of the room, and then he became a calmer boy for a while, and then he decided to protect another female bird that was here. So we've learned to keep him away from the females if we can so that he's a better companion bird. So this is Roni here. And what's Roni's story? Roni came to us. He's a very um, demonstrative bird. He likes to show us that he does not like ladies. Ah. And he will scream at us. He will bite uh, at us. He will slam his face into the bars to the point he breaks open his own face nice. feathers. And so we try to stay back away from him, especially if there's a man here who wants to meet him and try to handle him. So I, I make the ladies back away so it's a safer environment for Roni to succeed in that. How did you get involved with parrots and get involved with the, with the whole rescue operation here? Husband brought home a Sun Conyer from a pet store and fell in love with the bird and he was with us for 22 years. But after about five years, we were on vacation and someone put a male eclectus on my shoulder and it said, hi, I love you and it's beautiful and green is my favorite color. So I found this group when we came back to Minnesota and they, uh, I started volunteering for them. I did adopt a male eclectus and I still have him. And after a few years, they couldn't do the work of the, the program. So they said, here, you do everything. And the need is there, so we just keep working and helping parrots and the people. So if somebody has a parrot that they need to adopt out, they need to find a good home for it, what should they do? Uh, we can Google uh, parrot adoption in Minnesota. There are many groups all across the country, but ours in here in Minnesota, there's several groups. Parrothelp.org is our group, and they can call or text me or email, and we'll talk with them about the situation, we'll take the bird in, take whatever parrot related items because every bird needs something sure and then we keep them here and and um, we want to make sure that people know they can trust us that we're dedicated to helping the birds we want them to be comfortable with their choice we invite them to visit our group to see what we're all about before they make that decision if that's what they want so how many parrots do you take in a month it varies depending on the people that can't keep them. Our highest point was 70 parrots at one time. 70 parrots at one time? Yes. Wow. Yes. Um, and our highest was uh, over the year we placed 100 parrots in one year. Wow. Wow. So the need is there. And so if you guys weren't here, what would happen to those parrots? They probably would go to, um, humane societies don't take the big ones, they may go to animal control. Otherwise they'd just be stuck in a room, nobody really taking care of them. Indian ringnecks, they're a very imperious type of a parrot. They want to sit on your shoulder and supervise what you do, <laughs> but their feathers look more like hair. So they're like, do not mess up my hair, and they right. don't want to be pet. Um, they just want to sit and boss you around. The oh. males have the, the darker ring on them, and the females, there's two females, they just have kind of a shadow of a ring. Gotcha. So that's how we know their gender. So you don't need to do any DNA testing on these. Right, yeah. And then we have the most recognizable bird probably in the entire parrot world, a parakeet. Yes, and they are parrots because they got the two toes in front and two toes behind. Um, this bird came to us yesterday from a family whose 
younger children had it. They went off to college. Mom and dad bring it here. And uh, we placed it right away. And so we're just boarding this one. It's going to go home. So it's going to go here home. Only, only about an hour before it found a new home. This is Fisher. He's a noble macaw, the, the smallest of the macaws. And he's still in the macaw family because he has more bare face. Gotcha. But he is boarding with us while his his family makes a couple of trips. Isn't that right? Are you going to be nice? Yeah, you're going to nip at me. Say hi, Fisher. Hi, Fisher. Hi. Oh. <laughs> Basically, this organization is run on volunteers, primarily, isn't it? We're all volunteers. None all volunteers. None of us take a salary because we want more money to go to helping more birds. That is fantastic. And we have all ages of volunteers. And we have one day volunteers or we have years and years the same volunteer. Um, we have a couple little boys that have been coming in and one adopted a parakeet and he was having so much fun he invited his friend. So now they, they came and made toys and cleaned, they sweep, they changed the waters. They're just fabulous. So this is a really important service that you guys are providing for these birds. Yes, for many generations we hope. <laughs> so guys, a place like this is really important because they are caring for these birds that can't remain in their home. So guys, I'm going to put all the links to the Parrot Adoption Education Program in the description below. Check them out and if you live in this part of Minnesota, consider volunteering here. They do such important work with these amazing birds. So there's more animal adventures coming up. So hit that subscribe button when you do hit that bell so you never miss an upload. And until the next animal adventure, love the planet and rattle on.